it's going. Okay, so we are CB4S, if you don't know us, um, and our entire goal here is to support bookkeepers in freedom, like um, exactly how me and Megan have experienced it, and hopefully better, um, just if this works. Okay, so you can find us if you're ever looking for a replay or additional information, you can find us on YouTube and the podcast um podcast is still becoming widespread in terms of like everywhere you can find podcasts but it is on apple and spotify and some of those main ones it's also on youtube podcast if you're looking for it there so if you're looking for audio that's a great place to be um and we've tried to make it pretty easy to search if you're looking for a specific topic um these calls or a great place to ask Q&A. So if you have questions, you can submit them on the Facebook group. There is a guide section with questions that you can ask. Um, so you can submit them throughout the week if you're like, hey, I have a question, but I'm not gonna be there on Thursday because of a doctor's appointment or whatever life happens. This is the beauty of having your business. You can ask those questions ahead of time and then we'll go through it um, during the week. And we'll answer those questions. So I know we had um, a couple just submitted to me during the week. So we'll answer those. Um, or you can add them to the Zoom chat. So if you're watching on live, get into the Zoom link um, that I'm sure Megan has already posted. She's yep. always on top of that. Um, just click that link. Join us in Zoom so you can ask your questions. Because sometimes we miss them on Facebook because of like loading. So jump in. Let us see your face. We'll invite you to unmute and share your face if it's necessary, right? Like all of those things. So um, on this call, this the whole call of this call, whole point of this call, <laughs> did you guys hear that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is so Megan and I for over a year have been sharing behind the scenes, what's working, what's not, trends that we're seeing because we're talking to other industry leaders in the space. Um, almost weekly. And so we see more than just what's happening inside our group. We see what's happening in other groups, what, what's happening in other people's marketing. Um, we see that across the board. Not only that, we're lifelong learners. Both Megan and I, we're always learning something new. We're always in a training. So we see what's going on on Facebook. We see what's going on in Instagram, where you should be. Um, I just got updated on some recent YouTube trends for the year going into an election season. So any of those questions, like we're learning too, right alongside you guys and often ahead of you guys. So if you guys have questions related to your business, this is a really good place to ask um, because it's designed to help you grow your business. I really believe, and I have seen students do this. Um, if you only attended this call. If you showed up every week, asked your questions, went and worked in your business, showed up the following week, asked your next questions. If you only did this, you could reach your bookkeeping goals. I truly, truly believe that. Um, so just so you know what to expect, um, this is part of our podcast side. So we do, we want to make sure you guys have real tangible um, resources to take away from this call. So we do kind of plan a topic and based on questions that we're getting asked by multiple people um, during the week, we kind of use that as if two or three people are asking it, we've heard it, you know, five times this month, we're going to bump that up in our topic list and go ahead and talk about it. Cause if they're asking, you're probably asking as well. Um, so we do like, so know that this is topic heavy. Um, and then at the end we do Q and A. Um, so, so bring those questions and, and all of those things. Obviously, if you have a bookkeeping question that you want to screen share or things like that, that is better for the private coaching calls where me or Megan or one of the coaches can get on with you to share your screen, walk you through what buttons to click, um, or just review financials all of those things, you guys can use those for a wide variety of things. Um, 
So if you need help with those or need more help where you want to screen share or really walk through um, tech issues or something like that, feel free to schedule a call with us there. Um, and I have seen people schedule same day with myself. So like there's, there's a lot of availability there. Um, I know that there's some weekend availability. Some of the coaches do nights. Um, so there's lots of availability there. Um, first come first serve. So sometimes it gets really tight and it feels like there's an availability because people are scheduling often 72 hours in advance. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to find some time. Um, I showed you guys this last week. Um, we always have new wins going on in the group, which is really exciting. Um, I didn't have time to grab them for you guys this week. Um, but this is just a reminder of the people that we are helping in the group. So don't get bored by it. I hope this excites you. Um, I did have someone come to me this week and say, um, she actually said her, her goal is 18,000 a month so that she can cover her expenses and take home 10 to 13,000. So she was budgeting like 5,000 in expenses for like trainings and all kinds of things. Um, $18,000 goals. And, and I loved her thing because it was like my dream and it was really pretty. It was really inspiring. It was, here's my dream. This is, this is what I'm doing. Um, so cool. Cool. I hope you guys are dreaming big like she is. This, if you want to add this call to your calendar, like I know sometimes it's really easy to miss the Facebook events or I do all the time in other groups that I'm in. Uh, I like to add them to my calendar. This um, QR code will take you to the link. And then I also have the link somewhere. Um, I'll drop it in the chat real quick for you guys. If you guys want to add it to your calendar, this is how to do so. Um, There's the chat. I think this is the link. It might not be the link. Let's see. I'll test it. Cool. So if you want to add it to your calendar, you'll just click add to calendar. There's a blue button that pops up. Um, hopefully that helps some of you guys that are looking for that. Um, and then Megan, I did not get to grab the affiliate link. I don't know if you want to drop it in the chat when you have a yep. second. Yep. I'll um, I just ran out of time to grab it. Um, but if you haven't become an affiliate for, um, CB4S and the bookkeeper blueprint, if you're like loving what you see, um, feel free to do the affiliate program and, it, I think it walks you through some of that. Um, I think we also talked about last week. I don't remember. Yeah, we did. My brain is dead. <laughs> <laughs> January. Um, my brain dies a bit. Um, what does it entail? So, um, so people that enroll in the affiliate program or like in the programs do. So like if they do the course or program, the yearly program, um, they have an option to pay in full or monthly. And so you would get a portion of that payment every month if they do monthly or um, upfront if they do an upfront payment. So, um, and then Megan did drop the link below. Yeah, so and, pretty simple. And Facebook too, if you're there watching. So there's that. Okay, let me know if you guys have any other questions. And I will follow that. Um, but something, you know, la Megan did her goals workshop last, last, last week. <laughs> um, and there were, there were a lot of people on that call. Um, it was a really fun call. I saw a lot of good feedback from it. Her, Kyle, and some of the coaches were on it. Um, and they had a lot of fun and, but it kind of stuck with me over the course of the week something happened over the weekend. And I'm like, I've had enough of this particular thing that I was like dealing with. And I'm like, I'm going to make a change. But then I had another bookkeeper talk to me and she's like, I've had enough of this. <laughs> like I am going to reach my goals. I've had enough showing up to like, she's a bookkeeper for a company and it's a toxic environment. I don't know if you guys have ever been in like a toxic workplace environment. Um, and there's lots of different reasons that make it toxic. 
whether that's you can't, if you're a believer or a conservative or different than whatever the culture is at the workplace, and you feel like you have to be quiet, you bring that home to your family. Um, I know my husband, he was working at a Christian organization and it was still toxic. He brought that home every week, you know, cause there's this thing, complaint. They're not pursuing excellence. They're not doing his worldview. Not, and not that they have to like bend to his worldview, but if you're in a culture that supports diversity or supports like two way street, like I know when I went to work, there was freedom in being able to say, or like I valued, and I just kind of did it because some of the places I worked at, like public accounting, you're not like, um, you can have the same sort of like silencing of, unless I was partying all weekend, I probably should keep my mouth shut on this, this conversation when you asked me how my weekend was. Instead of being able to say, you know, I went to church on Sunday then it was a really good service. My kids had fun, got to catch up with um, a couple of friends that were visiting at church on Sunday. And, you know, that afternoon we went, you know, that evening we went to Sabbath dinner and it was just a great Sunday. If you can't truly share how your weekend was at work, it, you might not be in a super free environment. Megan, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but like, that yeah, just weighs on you if you're like, I'm constricted. I can't really be me um, in, in work. And I think that's the beauty of having a bookkeeping business is, well, I show up as me and I have learned over the years. Cause at first taking that employer mindset into the business or employee mindset into the business, it's, I can't have my kids screaming in the background. I can't have this going on. And, um, and I still have a client that I'm a little self-conscious of kids and dogs barking in the background but guess what Monday that's what was happening like we had an overlap on calls I had a client meeting the dogs went berserk for some reason and my kids are sitting right next to me like there's a chair right here they were both sitting there um like sharing like a video and I had a moment where I got self-conscious but the business does not exist for the client the business exists for them the business exists for my life and I have to remind myself constantly when I start feeling pressure to perform a certain way for clients. Um, so anyway, enough is enough. At some point, I think we have to get fed up with what we're enduring, whether that is a toxic work environment, whether that's not making enough, whether that's having to ask for, um, you know, like I spent the entire morning Wednesday at a dentist, you know, dentist office for three kids, 30 minute appointments each. So not entire morning, but a good chunk of the morning. I didn't have to ask anyone. Well, I did let Megan know. We have a meeting that we have every Wednesday that I did have to like, hey, I won't be on this meeting because um, I couldn't schedule any other time. But it's it that was more of an update. And I think Megan can do the same to me when her and I meet like, hey, it's an update. Like if I can still make this meeting, I will but you have to do what you have to do. So it's not like I am asking for permission. It's I'm going to do the best I can to show up when I say I'm going to show up, but also need that flexibility to live a life and serve my family because no one loves your family as much as you do. Yep. That right. That's just a reality. Um, no one's going to show up for um, baton competitions as forceful as Megan will for her daughter, right? Like you cannot be replaced in your family. You can always be replaced as the bookkeeper for someone or as the W2 employee for someone. You can always be replaced, but you only get so many years with your kids and you're not even promised that. You're not even promised 18 years. My mom did not get 18 years with me. My dad chose not to get 18 years with me. Well, you know, that's his choice, but my mom didn't get to, right? Like she passed away a lot sooner. I remember that. I note that all the time and I don't want to miss out on my kid's life. Like, what if I don't get to 18? What if it's me that doesn't get to 18? What if it's them that doesn't make it to 18? 
they get into a car accident. Like not to be like Debbie Downer. I'm like being Debbie Downer, but like at some point, <laughs> what you care about is so much more important than um a W two. And actually, strangely, this has like embedded itself in my entire week. I was listening to something last night completely unrelated to this. It was on entrepreneurship from um a conservative Christian group. And the guy started a website called Red Balloon. This website is for employers. So if you're looking for hiring, <laughs> this might be an option for you. Um, but he started redballoon.work and it is a, a job board. It's a job board website where employers can go and it's employers, they have to sign a pledge saying, I believe in your medical freedom. I believe in your freedom. I believe in your rights. Like this is the culture I have. And he was sharing a couple of things. One story that he shared was um, a large company. He was talking to the CEO. They have about a thousand employees. And the owner said, I can't jump ship yet to your platform because I have three activist employees, three. He is letting the culture be defined by three employees out of a thousand. Right, Megan? I'm like, oh my gosh. It's crazy. Um, yeah. And Kyle, when he was trying to find jobs, they demanded, you know, like you have to have this vaccine. Um, like that is part of the requirement. And so he got turned down for, for quite a few jobs that um, he was more than qualified for. And these employers were actually having a hard time finding people because they were getting say qualified people because qualified people are also saying, no, no, I have like, I have reasons or whatever. In his case, we're still wanting to have more kids and we don't want risk of different things. Anyway, that's personal, um, but the second story he shared was that um, he had a wife reach out to him and say, you saved my marriage. He's like, no, I created a job board. <laughs> but she's like, you saved my marriage because he was bringing that toxic environment home and he was making 200,000 a year. So 200,000 a year benefits, all of those things, you know, he actually described that situation though. And I thought this was really well said, if you really think about it, um, a slave with amenities. And I was like, that's a good point. Like you're, you're showing up with these cushy amenities in this situation, right? But you're bringing that home to your spouse, your kids, your whatever. And you're, you're having to spend an hour, right? Like that drive home, remember, is like decompression. You're reliving the day. You're grumbling about whatever. And if you don't finish it before you get home from that drive home, you're bringing it through the door. And that's when like husbands are like, I need 30 minutes, right? Like, because there is that toxic weight that they're bringing into the house. And I don't know, like when I was talking to this bookkeeper, I was just like, I am so glad you have finally had enough. Now she has said that before. And so she physically said, I've said this before, but I'm allowing for grace and I'm going to get farther this time than I did last time. Like, even if she has to tell me I've had enough again, she will have gotten farther this time around than she did last time. And I think there's that like perseverance of I've had enough. I'm going to show up today better than I did yesterday. And I'm going to set small achievable goals, which is related, right? Like my spaghetti bowl brain. Um, we're going to set those goals that make it so that I achieve small, small goals. And she emailed me her like goal list. And she's like, in three weeks, I'm going to have the pro advisor because that mentally is a roadblock to her. So I was like, oh, cause she was like, well, do I go get an associate's degree? Do I buy this? Do I buy that? And I'm like, you have so much experience. It's a distraction at this point to go do any of those things because her goals, as she was describing, like her first goal, like her master goal was 18,000 a month, but her first goal, I'm like, 
I have seen countless numbers of bookkeepers, Megan and myself included, hit that goal in four to six months on average, right? Like when someone's like, finally, I've had enough, I'm going to do this. They can hit that first goal typically. And I'm thinking of a very specific number, but like there's a first goal that I see bookkeepers hit and they almost always hit that once they've really had enough in four to six months. Um, Megan, now I'm thinking of you. Um, was it the same? Like I've had enough of this. Like I will not be, you know, I will not be mistaken. My daughter's mom will not be mistaken ever again. Enough, enough moment. Like, is that the same? Like I have had enough. Oh, most of it, Yeah, most yeah. definitely. And I mean, Uh, that's definitely one thing you got, you have to keep reminding yourself of that moment or that, you know, because I mean, it, it's hard, it's hard to build a business. It's hard to, you know, like you lose a client or somebody tells you no, then you start doubting everything. And so you have to remind yourself of that. For me, it was that particular moment that happened, you know, like now this is a non-negotiable. I have to make this happen. So yeah, I think for just just hearing your story, and I didn't mean to share it for you. Um, no, you're good. But um, just that, like, oh my gosh, you have crossed a line. Yep. You know, there has been some line crossed that I cannot ignore this anymore because there there are things that we put up with, and it just oh yeah, this is same old same old. You know, they're doing the same old same old. But at some point either you realize yourself or someone shines the light on it and says, whoa, whoa, whoa you're being treated like this. Well, how could you let this happen to yourself? Like, um, and when we can say I, I've had enough. Um, and for me, when I started my business, like it was just curiosity sake, but then there have been like moments in it where I'm like, okay, we got to change this because this is actually a hard boundary. Like I've let it, I've let the boundary become soft and realize, oh, no, no, remember that's a hard boundary because that can happen. Um, So I I think it goes so far into like every aspect of it. Um, For part of it was like, I started taking on client, like I started really messing up my quoting and I got off the win. You guys have heard me talk about that so many times, but um, I started undercharging clients and that would have, if I had continued, I probably would have shut down my business because it wouldn't have made financial sense because of the time it would have cost me to do that. And so I raised my prices, right? Like, and then I raised them again. And now it makes so much more sense. Like now it's so much better, but it took, it still takes time. Um, And when I think about like really improving systems or if you wake up and your business isn't the way you want it, because it is hard to operate a business. It is hard. And even the guy that owns Red Balloon last night was talking about it. He sacrificed a lot. Like he had sold a business. So he had grown another business, sold it. And he was like, I'm going to go play golf for a year. And then was presented with this opportunity And he was like, okay, I'm going to go step into this. Um, But it wound up being a huge sacrifice for him and his family. And um, well, I mean, sacrifice in terms of time and effort and risk, the financial risk it is of being an entrepreneur. Um, When I started my business, obviously my husband was working full time. So I got to start it as like really an experiment and so if it failed, it was paying for itself. So it was, it was just going to like fail. In Megan's case, when she left her full-time job, that's a huge risk. And so yep. if you don't have enough is enough behind you in that huge risk, then it's not worth it. For him in Red Balloon, it was the opportunity to give this to other people, to bless other people with what I'm doing, which is ultimately entrepreneurship. Because if it's not this, you're gambling, then you're right. You have one or two ways you can go. You're gambling or you're giving. 
And so if you're serving, if you're showing up to serve other people, partially to your family, you're also giving, you know, business owners an opportunity to stay compliant, to make sure their payroll taxes are filed, to do all of these things that allow them to continue to serve. That's, that's, that's impact, right? Like, and if it, and if you're in BNI, that is also giver's gain, right? That's, that, that's what BNI talks about is giver's gain. Um, and then when my husband left his job, that same risk is there, right? Now we're dependent completely on self-employment income, which I never, ever wanted to have be dependent on self-employed income. Can I just say that? <laughs> like, Right, so that is risky. It is so hard, um, but it it's, has been incredibly worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's very scary, especially coming from like an employee. You know, like you know, you have that W two. You know, you're gonna like you're getting a check every week, and then it's like now everything depends on me. <laughs> you know, like if I do, if this doesn't happen or I lose a client, but at the same time, you. I've seen like more than over and over, like you lose a client, like you can, if you put in the effort, you're going to go get it or another expense comes up, you can go find another client and, or get a cleanup job or whatever the case is. You don't have that at a W2 either, you know? Right. So when I got my first job at public in, in a public accounting firm, I was already engaged. I had been preparing taxes at Liberty Tax. And so it was tax season. So, you know, I was planning on increasing my income by preparing taxes. Non-compete, couldn't do that. And now I'm stuck. And we were dependent on my W-2 plus, like my husband was still working on his PhD. So I was paying the bills, right? Like, I mean, he was contributing a little bit, but not by much. You were the main, yeah. Right, like he was focused on getting his PhD like that's so it was just the income that he got from that um so yeah you can be capped in a w2 like or yeah it, it, so it could just be harder to make extra because you can only do so much overtime or you can be working o like unpaid overtime so if your salary and the expectation is that you're working 50 to 60 hours a week and not 40 Yep. Um, your hourly, you know, like then you realize your hourly rates lower and you could go make that, um, you can make a higher hourly rate freelancing and still cover your taxes. So for sure. Well, I hope that's helpful to someone in terms of, have you had enough? It looks like Sue, Sue's is saying, um, I need to calculate a better price. Um, absolutely especially to make it worth it there's definitely a time where you have to evaluate like um because we don't want to pay clients ultimately with our time to do their bookkeeping right um I did have a client at one point that I calculated it I calculated the expenses and I'm like I am paying this dude to do his bookkeeping I, like I did <laughs> It happens yeah. for sure. It can happen. Um, whether that's just under quoting for that guy specifically, I also had a like software expense and I think it, yeah, absolutely. I think it's part of the process and I think we learn um, because when other people say their price, um, if you compare it to other bookkeepers or depending on how you've set those prices, um, it can definitely feel like, what am I charging? Am I overcharging? Am I undercharging? And until you have like, oh, this is how I'm going to charge and price. And I have studied pricing. Oh my gosh. Um, but when I first got started, what did I do? I Googled, what's the pricing? What is everyone charging? How are they charging? You know, you get on their websites and you're like trying to stock and figure out how they're pricing. And sometimes that might not make sense for you. And sometimes it didn't make sense because I was coming in from a professional background and it was really confusing. I was like, wait, but I'm getting paid more over here. Um, or you feel like, oh, well, they've been in business for five years, so I can't charge what they're charging. 
imposter syndrome starts to creep in, doubt starts to creep in. And that can happen to anyone. It's happened to me at times when I start to do something new and I'm like, oh, I can't possibly. So it doesn't matter yep. where you're at. It doesn't matter how much experience you have or don't have. That is normal for everyone. Um, and it shows up differently. For some, it shows up as like a super lack of confidence. For others, it shows up as procrastination or distractions. I'm going to start a bookkeeping business. Now I'm going to go do VA work. I'm going to start this other business. Oh, okay. My e-commerce client is making a lot of money. So now I'm going to go be an e-commerce Amazon influencer. That, that's another way it does show up. Uh, so hey, hour, like charging hourly at the same time. I have limited hours for working. So it's a weird dichotomy. Yeah. Suze, do you charge hourly? It, it, Suze, that might be imposter syndrome creeping up, not being really clear on what it is you offer and how that like, that might be partially being unclear on what you offer and how to present that offer. That happened to me. That was kind of part of it was I didn't know how to articulate really what I did. Um, Cause it's, it's more than time. You're giving back more than time to a, a business owner. Um, and so really defining like how you can talk about it might help. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I did a little of both when I first started because I started on Upwork and was trying to learn their platform too. Um, for me, fixed rate has definitely, and having a minimum has really helped me. Uh, Megan, you do you, you have a minimum now? Or do you just, it's like a loose minimum with like the calculator or? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a loose minimum. I try to stick with 300 <clears throat> a month, but I feel like, and I mean, I don't have a ton of clients that are like that, um, but I have a couple that have came to me and like, they just don't have very many transactions. So $300 a month doesn't make sense for them at all. So um, either they're on like a quarterly pricing or like I have a couple that are at 200, but 200, like I don't go below that at all. Um, if you're not there or quarterly, then it's not worth it to them or me. I feel like, you know, um, and I do have a few that are on hourly, um, but it's mostly because of like what I'm doing for them, it varies so much um, that it would be hard for me to give them a set monthly price and it wouldn't be fair, fair to me or them at the same time, you know? Yeah, so I, I agree with that. I have a client that we do invoicing for, but their business was related to a very specific, they did ERC stuff. And so that business started ramped up there's like a bell curve right so like there wasn't that many invoices and there were all these invoices and then there's you know it's obviously going away and they'll, they'll do other stuff in the future but we did our so we did a fixed price for the monthly bookkeeping and then we did an hourly on top of that for if we go over so many hours on invoicing um so we would keep track of just the invoicing and I was able to do that with how we set it up internally. Um, so it made sense to just track the invoicing time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's not my normal. It just, right. it, it wouldn't have made sense for us to take on, take on the risk with how many they were going to send us. So right. To do that hourly. Um, so I think there's some, and, and that's like, that was completely outside of my normal, like quoting calculators and all of these things, like. I, I had to go with my gut and say, and work it out with the client saying, okay, this doesn't make sense because you don't know, like, let's try this. And if it didn't work, we would have changed it. Um, but yep. yeah, they were, they were a really tiny client though, all set all, all in all. Um, so I think we still averaged $500 a month because of the invoicing side. Um, but it was like a weird quote thing that happened. So. Yeah, but it, there's freedom in business. Like you don't have to like, if it's a yes for you 
and your gut is saying it's a yes and it's a yes for them, then it makes sense. And I think there's some freedom in that. So, um, like sometimes I'm hesitant, like we have a calculator, right? Sometimes I'm hesitant to like, yeah, what did you put in the calculator? Charge them that because not everyone's at the same spot. Like some, like there's so much that you can still bring into it. Um, but I know that that can get confusing too. So like if someone's starting out, it's like, Hey, let's start using the calculator, see where that gets you. And then we can experiment with, um, changing, changing it. Um, yeah. Okay. I did have one question that was submitted, Megan, slightly for you. Okay. They asked, um, they currently, their best way to market is Facebook. So they're super connected on Facebook. This bookkeeper, um, I promised her I would ask. And she is curious. Um, she got really excited when I told her that you're making money posting on Facebook. And I think it's <laughs> kind of immaterial all in all, but it's fun to yeah. like make money on Facebook while you're doing it. Can you talk about like what that looks like? Why you like, does she like, if someone's like, oh, okay, I would be incentivized to show up every day on Facebook if I'm also getting paid. Cause that's kind of where she took it. Like, oh, that would keep me accountable if there's an income attached to it too. Could you speak to that a little bit? Like, is that, should someone just not even worry about being paid on Facebook? Or is that like kind of a, cause you can kind of gain a gamify posting if you were to get paid. Yeah, Yeah, most, most definitely. So I mean, it's varied. I think October, September, October is when I first, like got the payment or whatever for it. And I think it was 40 something dollars that month or whatever. Um, And it like, as far as that goes, it depends on how much interaction that you're getting on your post likes comments, because you can go and look at like your dashboard, and it'll show you like, this post you got 50 cents on or whatever. So like you can see. Um, so at the same time, you like, it's made me realize that I want to make sure that I'm posting stuff that people are going to engage with, which at the same time is helping them see my business post more. Cause we've learned that throughout the whole process. Um, as well as, um, like making them public because then they can share it. Um, and then I'm showing up more because the more that I'm showing up, the more posts that I'm having the opportunity for to get paid on. Um, and I think, I, I don't know that like a hundred percent how that even came about, but it was partially, um, throughout last year, the entire year, pretty much. I kind of set a goal. Um, like I was going to post every single day, even if that meant I was showing up and I just, hopped on Facebook real quick and I shared the first thing I saw or I had a picture saved in my phone or whatever the case was. So I would get these, these messages from Facebook saying, Hey, like, congratulations, you're so many days in a row posting on Facebook. And it might've been like said one post, whatever. Um, so consistently doing that every single day, um, got me to that point. And my profile is also set up as, um, professional mode. So I don't know if that has, uh, partially probably has something to do with it. Um, but it's definitely like the more you post, the more interactions you get, like that's what, um, how it, the pay looks like it's based off of from what I've been able to tell, like based on my dashboard. Um, so it's definitely been something that like, Hey, I'm going to show up every single day. I'm going to make posts and I'm trying to make them more, um, stuff that people are going to want to interact with. So not just business salesy. Hey, I'm trying to sell you all the things, which has always been something that I've done anyway, but it definitely has proven. And like, I can see it now on my personal page, which post like the insights and stuff. You can see that on the post, how many people have clicked on it, how many people have liked it, reacted, commented, all those things. Um, so, yeah. And I mean, I, and I say this all the time, like I always make sure like from the very beginning of my business that I've had a, my, if somebody clicked on my profile, they can tell what I do. They can tell I own a bookkeeping firm, um, all those things. Um, and then even on the post, like as they're scrolling, it, maybe not every single post, but a lot of my posts, you're going to see like my bookkeeping um, firm either tagged in it, checked in on the picture that was created in Canva or, um, something along those lines. Does that kind of answer what she was asking, Sherry? 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, I had another question. I forgot. Oh well. But yeah, I think because. So it might be professional. The fact that you have professional that's easy enough to do. Obviously, there's additional profiles now and things to do. But I think that's part of when when you make a plan, you devise a plan and follow it, right? And that is a yep. biblical principle. So we devise a plan, you followed it. And we also see in the Bible that no labor is wasted. No good labor is wasted. And I think sometimes it can feel wasted, but it's either working for you or it is working on you. And yep. in this case, over time, because you devised a plan and followed it, you did see the fruit of that. Um, and, and this kind of goes back to enough is enough. Once it's enough, you're going to devise a plan. You can follow it in small steps. Obviously, we don't eat a elephant. What's the, you, you recommended a book one time, um, eat that frog. Yep. So you're going to do it in one, you know, small increments. And in that book, you, you, you gave the example. So in that book, he says to create sticky notes. So posting on Facebook could physically be one of the sticky notes you need to accomplish during the day. At yep. some point, any point will do, but before you close your phone at the end of the night and call it, call it done. Um, and the same when I was growing on Upwork, it was, I just need to do it for me. It was like three to five a day when I first started every day. And I think I still had like a, at, at the end of the week, if something happens, it still needs to be like, I did 20 during the week. I could do right. it at any point during the day from my phone. I set it up so that my phone, like I could do everything on my phone from it. And my rule at that point, because my kids were super young, was if their eyes are closed, I could be on my phone. <laughs> so um, so I often get nap trapped or whatever. So I, as long as my phone was charged and it was at that point, like I made sure it was charged, I could be on my phone and I just needed to find one or two because there might not be five when I, you know, get on at that time. So then I could do it before I go to bed or whenever, like throughout the day, I just needed to get five, you know, three done. If I got three done, then I'm done. Cause there might not be more than three that I want to apply to that day. Um, right. And then if for some reason I skipped a day because I had pediatrician appointments and a play date scheduled and whatever, and then nap time and now it's dinner time and I, you know, I'm just wiped at the end of the day for me during that time, like that was okay. Cause that was my priority. So I gave myself allowance in this case for you on Facebook, you did not give yourself allowance. It was, I am required to do at least one. If I do three, great, but one is my requirement. Yep. Um, so I like double came in and said, okay, by the end of the month, I want 15 to 20 done. That was my like fail proof. Like as long as I'm doing that, I am checking the box in integrity for myself. Yep. Does that make sense? Like, I think there is some grace if your plan allows for that grace. If not, you better get an accountability partner and some somehow hold yourself accountable if you can't do it. And you weren't showing up on podcasts. You weren't creating new stuff. You weren't creating a blog. You weren't getting distracted by all these things. You had one, one mission, one objective. That objective yep. was to post. Yeah. I mean, Facebook. So in the beginning of my business, I tried a lot of stuff, trying to see what worked or whatever, but consistently, I mean, June will be five years um, since I've started my business and consistently Facebook is where I've showed up. And I definitely five years in see that, you know, like I, you know, how many discovery calls I've had already. And then we're in just January, you know, four clients have signed and we're in the beginning of January and Facebook. You know, like that's where they came from. Yeah. For me. For sure. For sure. And then uh, Sue says, yes, I love the freedom. If you have a difficult client, you can choose not to work with them anymore. Yep. I have no tolerance, especially anymore. I tried to at the beginning. I had a couple of clients that I'm like, mm, should I? But attitude from clients, like there's grace. Like, you know, first time, okay, you're having a bad day. I just happen to be in the line of fire, right? Whatever. 
Yep. But constant like rudeness from clients, I don't tolerate. Um, constant like, and you can catch that passive aggressive like behavior in emails or lies or whatever. Like you can pick up on that. And if your gut is saying, mm, like, yep, they're gone. Because again, toxicity does like flow through the business to you, to your family. Yep. Um, it just, it's, it's going to, um, can you separate it? You could, um, but chances are it's seeping into the family somehow. Like it's, they're feeling it. Yep. Yeah. I had a client, um, I guess it wasn't this past year, but the year before. And I mean, Sherry, I probably messaged her crying several times dealing with that client, but it was like a super large client. I had already lost a large chunk of income right before that. So I felt like I had no choice but to deal with the way he was treating me and just, you know, just everything. And it literally got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, and so I let him go, but then I did not give my like, okay, now I got to replace that income. So what do I have to do to get there? You know, so I hit my marketing really hard at that point, but yeah, you, you don't have to. And sometimes it feels like we do because it's like, I need the money. I need the income I need, you know, but you can replace it. And a lot of times letting those clients go and not holding on, like it opens the door for bigger, better clients, things, you know. I, I let a $3,000 a month client go before I replace them because that's what this was yeah yeah he right. was it was bad and I'm like no I yep. like you're engaged to just like you literally just engaged me to do bookkeeping and the scope creep on that like so you have to be careful when you're signing a client I don't think it really matters what size because if they're uncomfortable with the price at any point because it can be an $800 client that they're like, oh, I really want a good service, but they're really not mindset, their own mindset, ready to pay for it. Like, so at three or five or eight, like you can find a client who's like not quite ready to actually pay that. And you're bringing out their own money trauma <laughs> or like yeah. their own, like, well, then you should be an employee, like type, like, I don't know if you can see me, like if you're listening on podcast, you can't, but like that, that knee jerk, like, uh, this isn't okay. It's not a yes for them. Therefore it's not a yes for you. Um, or you ha have to let them go in an ideal world. Yeah. You replace them first. You say enough is enough. Let's go find a new client, but toxicity, like, no, no, like that. No, I, I, I would rather eat ramen for three months then continue like I, I would rather live on ramen and a water like water only <laughs> like no juice no smoothies no whatever and deal with it um I, yeah. I would rather do that in joy and gratitude and loving my family than having a client like that um, Sue says, I had one who would always try to get out of pain and would not contact me for long periods of time. And then alternately, we had one kind of do that recently. Again, no, um, I actually put a clause in my engagement letter that we don't pause. Um, like if there's no, like no payment means no, no worky, no, no payment, no worky in essence, <laughs> um, we'll disengage and that's okay. Um, so no pausing will disengage. So not, not contact you for long periods of time and stuff like that. So you could also put, if you care, like, Hey, if you're, if you get 90 days behind, we're going to disengage, no, you know, no refund type thing. Um, or if you have yep. a refund policy on that, then, you know, we'll disengage at 90 days with half of the refund or whatever. Um, Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I was texting someone. I don't normally text my clients, but this one is like kind of a friend circle. And I was texting him this week. He's now involved with two clients that I have. Like he's only got one business, but he's kind of involved with another client that I have. And he has to get me information for that client too. And so it's, um, but he's fun to text. And I'm like, I can, I could just have 
Like there are three clients that I'm like, I could have three clients. That'd be fine. <laughs> like some days I'm just like these three. I love you guys. Um, but I actually, I don't currently have a client right now, but I don't like not want to keep. Yeah. For like personality sake anyway. So, well, I see that we are at the hour. Um, I don't think we missed anything in chat. I don't know about Facebook. I don't see anything on Facebook. Greens. So um, hopefully this was helpful to someone and um, to those of you that showed up and um, just, you know, at what point do you have to change something? And it doesn't have to be. I don't think you have to wait for it to be like this end of the world situation for you to say, oh, I'm going to change this. I'm going to improve my situation. I think there is room to improve, you know, in small increments of 2% a day, 1% a day, whatever you want to call it. I've seen it both ways. And I'm like, 2%, I could do 2%. Like, you know, what is it that you can improve? Um, and then oh, as you do that 2%, like 18 months, you look back on it, you're going to be like, oh, wow. I have made this like, grand improvement in my business and it looks a lot different and you could see that you could start to see it in six and nine and 12 for sure but I think if you really give it time at 18 months you're like I accomplished that that happened I sacrificed for that long and this happened Um, or at least I do that all the time I'm like 18 months I'm like whoa did you know Cause it's always like, okay, let's get to the next goal. Let's do that. Let's do whatever. But if you pause and say, we did that, that's, and I think you should, I think you should it frequently, but if you're not where you want to be, make changes and give it, give it time, give it time to work for you, not just on you. Yep. For sure. Anything you want to add, Megan, before we jump off? I don't think so. Well, we will see you guys next week. If you haven't added the event to your calendar, grab that link real quick before you jump off and um, add it to your calendar so you can get that. Like It'll open to the Zoom link and everything for you. Um, and we'll keep it updated. So if there's an update, just be sure to grab that and all of those things. But have a good week. Have a good weekend. You're welcome, Jennifer. I'm glad that you feel refreshed after these. That's awesome. Um, in some ways I do too. I really enjoy um, getting to talk to you guys. So, okay. Well, you guys have a good weekend. <laughs> Bye. Bye.